Hello everyone, my name is Ryan, or you may know me by the name of the channel, S Reaper G. Now this is the part of the video where I say, Hey guys, how you doing today? We're gonna talk about this, please subscribe, F that. Because today, we're gonna talk about Pinnacle Station from Mass Effect 1, the original DLC. The original DLC is back. One thing we've learned over the years with games is that where there are shortcomings, issues, bugs, problems, or glaring omissions of features and, and content, the modding community soars to the rescue seemingly every time. Well, not every time, but most of the time. Pinnacle Station has made its return to Mass Effect Legendary Edition thanks to a mod created by the group ME3 Tweaks. The video in question was posted by M Gamers or M Gamer Z. I think it's M Gamers, but I'm getting caught up in the name. But he is the proprietor, or they are the proprietor of the aforementioned ME3 Tweaks group. Now go show them some love. All the links to their website, the video where you can download the mod and everything else will be down below. Now I did get permission to show you some of the gameplay they have of Pinnacle Station of the mod, but I'm not going to show you too much because if you are interested, I really want you to go and check out the mod or at least check out the videos they have posted of it. And also I was told to make you guys aware of the fact that the mod is complete. It's a fully playable, it's complete, but they're still gonna be doing updates and performance related updates to it, things like that, bug fixes. So if you do trek in the Pinnacle Station, you should keep that in mind. Now you're sitting there saying, Ryan, I don't give a shit. Well, what's Pinnacle Station? Pinnacle Station? I'm so glad you asked. Pinnacle Station was a DLC developed by Demiurge Studios for the original Mass Effect. It's basically like a combat simulator. Upon announcing Legendary Edition, Bioware said that the source code is corrupted for the original DLC, so it would not be ported to the remaster. As the devs of the mod even state, this is widely considered probably the worst of the Mass Effect content, DLC content that is, in the whole trilogy. And and especially if you line it up with things like Lair of the Shadow Broker or Overlord or even Citadel for Mass Effect 3, it's it's really not super memorable or even very good. Personally, at least, I think that. I mean, if you've played or saw the DLC that they did for Mass Effect 2 and 3, it's really hard, at least in my opinion, to really miss this too much. But despite that, some folks do like it and wanted to see it in Legendary Edition. So ME3 Tweaks came to the rescue and said, listen guys, we got you, we're working on it. And that's what they did. They worked on it, and here it is. If you gotten this far into the video, then thank you, and I'm sorry I talk way too much, but there are timestamps down below if you want to skip around. I realize that won't help me with engagement for the video, but at least you could skip around to the parts that might interest you, or you can shut me the fuck up. Both sides have their pluses and minuses. Okay, if you read the blog post for the process of porting this DLC, which we're gonna go through a little bit, not, not, fully because there's some technical parts of it that are maybe not going to be understood by either me or you. Um, it sounds like there's a massive undertaking here that was taken on by this modding team. So we're going to answer two questions here before we go anywhere else. How long did it take and why did Bioware not do it themselves? First, we're going to look at the origins and initial feasibility. This project started on September 18th, 2021 after I am gamers came back from a complete modding hiatus after working pretty much non-stop on modding from March until the end of July. After seeing someone comment about wanting Pinnacle Station in Legendary Edition, I began to look into seeing how capable our tools would be at attempting something like this. Our tools could already port assets from Mass Effect 1 to Mass Effect 3, and the Legendary Edition games are based mostly on the Mass Effect 3 version of the engine. Not entirely, but the data formats are mostly the same. So you're looking at a mod that took about under two months to make to port to Legendary Edition. Now, some people will say, why didn't Bioware just do it if it didn't seemingly take that long for modders to port it from the original game? Now, Bioware basically said that they would have had to delay another six months to rebuild that whole DLC from scratch since the source code was lost and corrupted and definitely not just smashed in an alleyway somewhere. I'm kidding, I know it's source code. I know you can't smash source code in an alley somewhere, but what if you could? Anyway, the source code was lost, so we just established here that the source code is gone. So. What the modders did is that they ported it from the original game. Now the thing is here, as M Gamers explains, they didn't have the original source code, so nobody does. Like I said, nobody has the source code originally, or at least a working version of it. So what you're looking at here is a mod that took a little under two months to port to Legendary Edition. 
Now, in response to that, some people are gonna say, why didn't Bioware slash EA just do it if it didn't seemingly take that long for modders to port it from the original game? Now, the way Bioware put it is basically they said, well, we would have had to delay another six months to rebuild this whole DLC from scratch since the source code was lost and corrupted. As we just talked about here, they ported it from the original game, the modders. The modders ported this from the original game. The thing is here, as M Gamers explains, they didn't have the original source code. Nobody does, Bioware doesn't, Demiurge doesn't. So it was seemingly a difficult undertaking for their team given that fact. A lot of the blog posts is pretty in-depth and technical and because I'm not personally super tech savvy with modding games or development tools or modding tools, as well as personally just probably too stupid to understand to begin with, I'm gonna go through the parts that are easy to understand or at the very least, parts of it that are gonna be interesting to you, the viewer, and as well as myself. But if you wanna read all of it, like I said, you can, it's all in the description, the link at least. A lot of the whole blog post is about what they ported and how, and what they had to essentially rebuild from the ground up that didn't port over properly. Initially, it was going to be Shepard's apartment, which is the prize for completing Pinnacle Station. This will be fairly easy since there is not much sequencing involved and only a handful of meshes, something that could be done in a mod without too much work. Over time, the project evolved into the entire DLC, with a focus on making it feel more like part of Mass Effect Legendary Edition rather than feeling like a port of content directly from Mass Effect. You can even see this in like early builds of this mod that they had this issue with like the rainbow terrain like outside of the ship, which apparently was a pain in the ass to fix. The way they describe it here is that they have shaders in games, essentially shaders are how your graphics card draws the surface of different models as Emma Gamers explains here. For years we've known we cannot port material shaders across games, even between Legendary Edition games because of some unknown data that trails the embedded shader files in the shader catches. I'm no expert on shaders, I'm not either, but shaders from my understanding are essentially how the graphics card draws surfaces of polygonal models. If you don't have a shader, the graphics card can't draw the polygon. The way they kind of work around that is by pulling from other things and kind of cloning them or mimicking these objects to get those shaders that they needed. And apparently the audio between the original Mass Effect games and the Legendary Edition wasn't that big of a difference, so it wasn't as hard to pour. The lighting here apparently was a touch and go situation. And like I said, if you wanna read about all of that in a more technical way, then you can read the full blog post. Lack of audio. In the original Pinnacle Station, simulator maps had no music and most enemies had no audio, grunts, sparks, etc. It was pretty boring to hear your gun shoot for minutes while Ahern yells at you the whole time. We decided to add music to each map to make it more entertaining to play, which had a surprisingly profound impact or effect on how enjoyable each map was, ellipsis. We tried to pick tracks that felt appropriate for the map theme. All maps except Warehouse have a second track that is switched over to as the combat intensity picks up, and it makes a world of difference in how fun the scenario feels. It's one of the best new features in my opinion. Now, look, as I've said, I don't think Pinnacle Station is the shining example of a Mass Effect DLC. Considering it was developed by a separate team from Bioware, it's kind of a mystery what exactly the hell was going on here? Like what they were going for with this DLC? Now, I don't know if they had tracks for the DLC and they were just cut because they couldn't get them done in time or they didn't want to reuse tracks from the main game so they just omitted them entirely. Kill volumes. Kill volumes were a significant problem when porting this DLC. In the original DLC, the maps had a bunch of kill volumes just outside the playable area which was so enemies don't fall out of the map and survive. They go on to describe how if Shepard or his team were ragdolled into this outside area, they would get deleted from the game. So what they did is put these invisible meshes to prevent Shepard or team from being thrown out of the ring, and even if they are, they won't get terminated from the game like before. There's even some changes to the survival mode game type where survival has you killing a number of enemies to progress waves, except there were issues with those enemies. So as they describe, basically if the player doesn't kill enemies, nothing happens. The game just continues on and kills the enemies by default because it thinks that they're stuck or something, which can kind of give you the advantage in having those more difficult enemies just taking more time to spawn. So you can just easily, as they say, cheese it. Now in ME3 Tweaks version, they have enemies basically pursue you after about 25 seconds or so. So it keeps the pace of the battles flowing. So as they say here, you could run, but you can't hide forever at least. Worth noting this is something that they said that they're going to tinker with or continue to tinker with in future updates. They've also taken some time to smooth out some issues in jank like texture pop-ins 
lighting, as well as that dreaded loading dialogue box that you'd get sometimes in the original release of the game. We preload files that we know will appear ahead of time to minimize the amount of loading dialogues that show up. If you mash your way through things like the scoreboard, the files may not load in time and you'll still get them, but for the most part, they should be gone. Texture pop-in should be greatly reduced. This is a very common problem in Mass Effect 1. We identified moments where we could load in textures that we knew were about to be shown on screen, as well as making use of black screens and blocking for texture load to force the game to wait until textures have streamed in. We fixed poor lighting in a few areas that seemed like they were missing lights, like when Ahern gives you his special mission. We fix strange things such as replies on conversation wheels, changing positions depending on which conversation option you last chose. So what you have here is a lot of fixes and improvements. It's got that Legendary Edition glow on it, that Legendary Edition scent, if you will. Give that a little waff, you got that scent coming in. They even discovered, and you'll find this out with a lot of old games as people comb through them or mod them or look through the game files, that there's a lot of cut content with this DLC, so clearly it was meant to be a bigger DLC with more story attached to it, but they just cut a bunch of it out for some reason prior to launching it. For this DLC specifically, there's like cut dialogue and little event sequences throughout the different maps, and as I just said a few seconds ago, apparently there was more story content planned, but they just cut that all out. And whether or not that can be fully restored or restored in a more cohesive way at some point in time or that's even being worked on i don't know it doesn't seem clear based on that i think they did restore a couple of things so you can look forward to maybe getting a different experience if you're familiar at all with this original dlc the last thing i want to mention here is this whole thing about performance because they're not rebuilding this using the original source code it doesn't exist anymore it's corrupted nobody has it so it's going to take some more tinkering and additional work to get that performance to where they want it to be a simple way to think about it is if you're on an older graphics card and they give some examples in this post here you might have some issues if you're trying to run this mod above 60 fps in some areas but they're continuing to do some post-launch updates on pinnacle station they're optimizing its performance and even adding some audio localization for different languages which I think they just added a bunch in with a new update post-launch. Now, if we zoom out a bit here, we're looking at a big undertaking for some modders to take on. And despite the content of the DLC, and like I said, it's really not anything special. The DLC, that is. But we can't discount their work here. And I think it's worth checking out if you can and own Legendary Edition. In hindsight, it's probably not as bad or as unmemorable as I am making it out to be, and I think with the whole package back together again, I guess with this mod, it's cool to see it return. And it's a big shout out. We got to give a big shout out to the modders who made it happen and it brought Pinnacle Station back from the depths of source code hell. Do source codes go to hell? And that's part of the reason I wanted to talk about it here with you guys today. I want to talk about the cool stuff the community is doing with Mass Effect because Mass Effect's awesome. And that's why you're here. Or at least that's why I'm here. I don't know why you're here. I do hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it wasn't too boring. I mean, I found it interesting, but I hope you find it interesting too. And like I said, definitely read more into the blog post or go and download it and show them some support on their video and on the channel and on the page. Show them support, join their Discord, talk to them, I don't know, do, do whatever you gotta do. Show them some love. If you wanna show me some love, you can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram. All of those links will be down below, and if you wanna see more content like this, subscribe. Let me know what you think about this mod down below and thumbs up the video if you liked it. And I guess you can't thumbs down anymore. So just hit dislike if you didn't, I guess. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you all soon. And I love you all. Maybe.